Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where two old guys, two guys that are probably too old to be playing these games to understand Mm -hmm. them, and to relate to them. It's just us. We got some pretty poor feedback on our last episode, so we just decided to just <laughs> go back to two. I'm just saying that because I know Jorge isn't listening to this episode. <laughs> and uh, for Nicole, who probably will get to this in like we, two yeah. months. Yeah, I'm we, just kidding, Nicole. We didn't get bad she'll feedback. She'll probably be done with this by the time she gets to it, and, <laughs> and it won't, she won't care. Play old games. Mm-hmm. All right. I guess well, let's go ahead and get this out of the way first. All right, I'm your beard host, Tyler. And I was trying to think out what I wanted to talk about shortly for an intro. And it was talking about last week's quiz when we got what kind of introvert we were. Right, or our personality based on what we hate. Yeah, you know. yeah there you go. And What kind of introvert are you would be a pretty good quiz. I'd actually take that quiz. I think quiz. that is one, but <laughs> we'll have to take it eventually. And then... Because I got like introvert or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, whenever I take Myers Briggs, almost every time I take it, my introvert, extrovert, I'll get a different one every, every other time. Do you take it a lot? Yeah, I take it fairly often because I want to know, like, I'll forget what I am and then I'll take it again. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, that's the part that always flip flops. And same for, like, because I've referenced that according to the new thing. Like, I'm right in the middle, I'm an ambivert. I can, I'm perfectly happy doing, doing both. So you're a jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. People are being loaned. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. I don't care. But I do. I was trying to think of what some examples of each type of behavior that I that I that I have. Okay. So and, like on the introverted side, and on the extroverted yeah, side. Yeah. And I know one of the strongest introvert behaviors that I have, and it's like, it's probably the most staggering introvert behavior that that I regularly do, and that is it makes me not want to go to church with Meg, because this is something that they do in the Episcopal Church. They may also do it uh, for Catholic Mass. I don't know. I've never been to a Mass. Tony will let us know. But there's a part of this, of the the service Mm -hmm. to where they do something called the peace. Okay. And at the peace... Is that peace be with you, all that? Yeah, because they'll basically... Then everyone's like, all right, and they'll do the peace, and then basically it's a free-for-all for everybody to walk around shake hands with somebody else, and say, peace or peace be with you. Uh-huh. Totally do that at Catholic Mass. I fucking hate it so much. Really? Like, whatever introvert is part of me just fucking snarls and hates that. Like, it makes me n- never want to. I Getting up early with Kenna and getting her ready yeah. and getting her there, yeah. like, that's not the problem. It's the peace that it's- makes me, like... I do not want to go to church and do this. I hate this part it's, so much. It's the hatred inside you. Oh God! It's just it's so <laughs> it's so awkward. If like you yeah. were just supposed to say like hi, how are you, and have like even like a weird small talk conversation, I could deal with it. But it's saying looking somebody in the eye, shaking their hand, just saying peace. Everything about it feels weird and uncomfortable. <laughs> so, have you tried peace be with you? No, what I do is, thankfully, in their, in, in their bulletin, they have everything lined up how the service is going to go. So during the last part of like one of the prayers, yeah. I get up and I go to the bathroom. Every time? Every single time now. <laughs> is it on the board? You know, where they've got the, I don't know what you call it, the, the board that uh, lists where all the readings are going to be in the Bible that day? Is it like... I don't know. <laughs> Tyler goes to the bathroom. Clearly, I'm very religious, <laughs> but like John 8? Colon four? That's probably a thing. And then right below it, Tyler goes to the bathroom. You could. You could totally do that. <laughs> because every time, like, Meg will see it, like, roll her eyes. Because, like, at the same time, <laughs> I just get up. And I'm like, I'm not doing this shit. And I'll go to the bathroom. 
The congregation's and, like, why is the priest rolling her eyes? And usually, like, <laughs> I, I time it pretty well before I go to the bathroom. They do their they do the last like part of the prayer. They do the peace and the offering. So I get to skip on that about me passing the plate and not putting anything in it. I get to pass over that awkwardness too. And they'll then they do communion. They do communion every every single Sunday mm-hmm. in the Episcopal Church, mm-hmm. which I'm not used to. Growing up, like we only did it once a month, and it was like a big ordeal. But so I played it. If I go to the bathroom, I actually use the bathroom, and I do catch up on all of my mobile games, <laughs> and I get back just in time for my row to go up to communion. Show up so, for crackers. Yep. Yeah. Get my crackers. Get my wine. Go back. Get dismissal. Go home. I think you should just. Go here's a here's a solution. I feel like just go full crazy person. Just keep frozen peas in your pocket. <laughs> peas, <laughs> peas. people's face. Peas, <laughs> peas. To the point where they'll ask you to stop doing it, and then you could just sit there while they do that. <laughs> I think, well, here's what's really funny. I feel like is I am an introvert. I don't feel like I have many extrovert tendencies. I mean, this show I think is kind of mm. different. Mm-hmm. Um, but this doing a podcast is really weird. I was thinking about this. After we took the quiz, I, I am I am introverted, but like I couldn't have this conversation I'm having with you if this room was filled with twelve people. Mm-hmm. Like that's why I have a hard time with like I don't know if I could do a live show because it's like I don't I don't mm-hmm. feel like I could be open. Yeah, I mean it's one thing if I don't see the strangers that are listed, <laughs> but it's like if I see them right well, there, we're at a stage with bright lights, so yeah. even if you look at it, it's just like shadows. That might help actually, <laughs> but like if I see someone, I'll be like. Fuck that! I don't know that person, and they are silently judging me. So I'm going to be on my best behavior. <laughs> but um, one extrovert tendency that I've had is, man, when I was a kid and we would go to mass, peace be with you. Favorite part of church, yeah. Favorite, absolutely okay. right. favorite part of church because it was the least boring part. Okay, the least boring part. I get to I got to meet people. I got to like I like shaking hands. That's a thing. Add it to the list of things I like. Shaking hands. I do. I love it. I can't explain it. I just, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, maybe it's because, all right, it's a therapy session. I normally don't touch a person. Like, in my day-to-day life, I could probably touch one, two people. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe three. Maybe mom. Might might touch my mom <laughs> on the shoulder or something. Like, thank you. <laughs> but like, Nikki, I touch every day. And Henry, I touch every day. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's like, I don't know. You got to, but the shaking of the hand is like a person extends their hand out of their bubble and you extend your hand out of your bubble. And it's just like, this is a thing. Okay. This is, thing this is generally do. accepted. Yeah. This is the protocol. Yeah. So I kind of wish that I, like, I wish it was like a daily thing. Like when you see someone in the morning, instead of saying good morning, you shook hands. <laughs> I'd be down for that. I could, I could extrovert behavior. I can always play D and D. Yeah, always. That's why at Dragon Con, I have no problem. If no one wants to play, like out of the group we go to Dragon Con with, yeah, I don't care. I'll go and sit with a group of six strangers and play D anD D for three or four hours, and then do that. I used to do that back to back to back mm-hmm. all day, twelve, fifteen hours straight. You do no problem with yes, that. I- now, now I don't do it as much just because like. If I do that, I'm just going to be playing a lot of... I'm not going to be having fun, because the quality of gaming at Dragon Con has like, taken a steep decline. So like That's because Call of Cthulhu Randy's not doing his thing. That's true. He's missed the... Or he, I've seen him there at Dragon Con. He's just not running it. I and know he's listening. The other guys that, I'll, that I like that ran um, Little Fears, they hardly... They'll yeah. do this weird kind of thing where you just like pick a random game you want to do, Yeah. And but they're always like, wait, there are way too many people there to ever like really play the good games they used to run. So I just I have think, to be really selective about what I want to try. Otherwise, I'm just going to just gonna have a bad time. Here, here you go. You paid $3. Yeah. Sit down and have a bad time for the next three or four hours. I think maybe that's why that Little Fears guy isn't running this thing anymore, because I probably just crushed him, because I really <laughs> did not have fun with his like homemade system. Oh, yeah. I remember that. The clockwork or something like that. Yeah. 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 He's like, are you having a good time? Something wrong? No, that's all right. I mean, it's okay. I just I'm thinking of myself. I just fucking hate this yeah. thing that you've created. But. Yeah. This thing where I just like just make up shit I want to do and then roll. <laughs> it's a then really, roll dice. Yeah. Look, I mean, I could just say the whole world dies. Roll d twelve hit a twelve. Well, that's what happens. What? What now? What now? Get that? Yeah, that system also like 
you get one asshole, yeah, yeah that's the way it's gonna go. Yeah. So it was a little too. Um, whose line is it anyway? <laughs> Where it's like the the DM's just like, all right, uh, give me a type of restaurant. <laughs> okay, I heard Chinese. Okay, you guys are the Chinese, Chinese restaurant. restaurant. <laughs> Well, I knew the Chinese restaurant. Uh, uh, I've got a gun. Oh, 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 oh this guy's got a gun. Where are you guys doing the, the Chinese restaurant? Yeah, you're right. But other than that, I don't have I don't have a lot of like strong introvert behaviors, except for the piece. Can't fucking stand it. Um, I've gotten to the point where if it's small, I don't really like small talk at all. But if it's small talk with strangers who know nothing about me, yeah, that's a little better than strangers that know a little. I know. Bit about me. I'm with you. Like, co- like with coworkers, small talk is the worst. Mm-hmm. I hate it. Like, I hate being in like the same room as a coworker, and it's just like there's that dead silence. I always feel like I got to break that silence. Mm-hmm. It's awkward for me. Or I introduce somebody. Oh, you're a chef. <sighs> okay, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Who's your favorite chef? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for that. What? A, yeah, no, I like Asian food. Yeah, uh huh. No Vietnamese. Five examples of Vietnamese food that I like. Okay. Yeah. All right. No knives. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. At least strangers know what you do. And I'll do that, and I'll have to turn right back around and have the exact same discussion all over again. Like it's been that way. Since I, since I graduated, since 2008, since I graduated culinary school, I've every function where small talk is required, I've had that conversation. <laughs> Thank you, Food Network, for making everything a lot worse. <laughs> now everybody's all interested. So, <laughs> You want to take a quiz? We talked about taking a quiz, too. Yeah, we can take a quiz. I'm Dave. <laughs> What's up, Internet? I'm Dave. I'm your bespectacled host. Let's take a quiz. Yeah. Let's take a quiz. Because really, we've got, this is going to be a, this is going to be an episode. It's not going to be a bad episode, <laughs> but this is going to be, we've got a lot of things that we want to, <laughs> we've, got, we've, got, we've got some things we want to say. we got the airing of grievances tonight, I feel yeah. like. you and It's just you and me. There's mm. no one else that like we have to be concerned about, well, I don't want to like feel like we brought someone in on an episode <laughs> where we're just going to like. Really let some shit out. Because <laughs> I came in, I had like black ink and some fire, and I've just set down this summoning circle to <laughs> fully summon the cloud of negativity yeah. and just fill the room. And it's not necessarily about, because the day we're talking about Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Right. It's not necessarily all about Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Exactly. I feel like this game is just kind of, we've kind this of This is the tipping something. point. This yeah. is the tipping point. Yeah. And it, I say that because... Before we started recording, like literally like seconds before we turned the mics on, we were talking about how, sh- well, do you want to get into it? Let's take the quiz okay. first. All right, let's take the quiz. Yeah. <laughs> are you ready? Are, Jay, are you ready? Are you sitting down? Skip ahead like five <laughs> minutes, Jay. Um, Tyler, here's the quiz I'd like to give you. Mm-hmm. It's found on Quiblo, as the you, best, all, the best quiz you all remember. I've got all <laughs> kinds of malware on my computer now because I'm browsing <laughs> Quiblo. Um, this quiz is by KBHS News at 5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The title of this quiz, Tyler, is What Kind of Squirrel Are You? <laughs> <laughs> it's fitting. It makes sense. <laughs> Conquer's a squirrel, so I figured... Conquer's a red squirrel. What kind of squirrel? What kind of squirrel are the the hosts of Tadpog? Secret squirrel. So, first question I have for you, Tyler. Mm-hmm. What colors are your eyes? Blue and green, black and red. Everybody has different color <laughs> eyes. <laughs> and all caps. Your eyes are just one color: purple and black, or goggles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna go. With a, a, a slightly different answer. I've been told, like, I have very brown eyes. You do have I have, have extraordinarily brown eyes. Brown eyes. Mm-hmm. And people have said my eyes are so brown and dark that they, they're they almost red, have red tints. So I'm going to say black and red. Black and red? Okay. I am going to go... I'm going to go blue and green. Mm-hmm. That's, that makes sense. Okay, Tyler. My brother literally has a brown and blue eyes. Really? I never he, noticed that. He has a, a quarter... Of one of his eyes is blue, and then the rest brown. N- Next time I see him, I'm gonna creep him out. Yep, just get real close <laughs> to his face. Tyler, question number two: What color is your hair? Is it brown, mm. black, 
blonde, purple, or blue? All the common hair colors. <laughs> bald, not an option. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's no such thing as a bald squirrel. <laughs> then I'm just fucking unique snowflower of the squirrel universe. Uh, brown. All right. I uh, am also going to go brown. Tyler, have you ever had the sudden urge to eat nuts? Yeah. Well, here, you want me to read the options? I, I, fucking, I fucking love cashews and almonds. I mean, I can go ahead and mark yes. Okay, let's hear the options. Yes, no, maybe, <laughs> always, or I'm not telling. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> just a str- strong yes, a strong yes. Strong, solid yes. Um, I'm going to go, it's tough, it's tough. I'm either going to go yes or always. I'm going to go always. Always, always want nuts. You know me. <laughs> I can't get enough nuts. <laughs> All right, number four. Have you ever wanted to be a squirrel? Always, in all caps, no, maybe, not telling, or I want to be a chipmunk. <laughs> you said yes was an option? Did I hear a yes? Uh, no. No, yes is not an option. You have uh, always. I guess I would maybe. have. I, I have at one time in my life had a strong inclination to be a squirrel, and it was after watching... Um, that Disney King Arthur movie. Oh, yeah. Where he turns into a squirrel, yeah. and that girl squirrel Falls is Falls in like, love with him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a squirrel because I felt bad for that girl squirrel. Like, I'll go out, I'll go out with that girl squirrel. Mm-hmm. So I guess always. Always. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really confident in my personality yet. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I am going to say not telling. <laughs> All right. This is going to give away an answer, okay? Okay. But question number five. What is your name? Alvin? <laughs> blank. There's just a blank line. I don't know what's up with that. Other. James or Amelia? Blank. Blank. Okay. Tyler, I think that I am going to go with other. Um, here is a question, or here's an ad that's cleverly disguised as a question. Um, which of these choices best describes you? I need to go to school and get my degree. Make a lot of money working from home. I would love to find a new game to play. I mean, come on. We know, we know which <laughs> option already. Or I'd like to earn extra money by taking surveys online. I don't know. I do like surveys. <laughs> so if I could earn extra money. Because I already earned plenty of money taking surveys, but extra money taking surveys. Thanks, Quiblo. <laughs> Suck a dick. <laughs> Tyler, question number six. Mm-hmm. That last question is question infinity, by the way, in case you were curious. Okay. Had the little infinity <laughs> sign where the number should be. Because that question never ends. Number six, where do you live with Dave? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not telling. In a house, in the air, or always moving. Not. I just want to point out, that's not a place to live. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess in a house. You don't want to live with me? Well, I don't live with you. Okay. If I did live with you, I would say with Dave. I am going to say with Dave because I do live with myself. I've been roommates with a lot of my friends. Not you, though. We have never been roommates. That is, that's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could live with Brandon. You could live with me. <laughs> I feel like there was a time in my life we definitely could have lived together. <laughs> and that was that time. <laughs> well, no, I guess we were roommates for like... A week and a half, whenever Jacob and I stayed with you and Brandon, whenever we didn't have an apartment when school started. That's true. That wasn't bad. Yeah. I just we, feel like... We slept on your couch and jerked off to the free satellite pornography. <laughs> yes. And then bought you a bunch of groceries. <laughs> so it worked out. <laughs> it, look, I'm not saying that I would not enjoy it. <laughs> I think I would get on your nerves. Mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you would. I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not easy to annoy. That is true, so, but I have a feeling I could get to you. I mean, I lived with Josh, Ramon, and Link for like a year. I was totally fine. <laughs> I lived with he who shall not be mentioned basically for like <laughs> three or four. So, Fair point. Number seven, do you have brothers? Yes, I have two. No, I used to. I will in the future. I have them running around the house. I guess I'll say I have them running around the house. <laughs> All right. I will say no. Although 
I could text my mom and be like, get on that brother. I've always wanted a brother. <laughs> Tell dad to buck the fuck up. <laughs> Tell that doctor to put all that back in. <laughs> <laughs> Question number eight. What color is your fur? Hmm. Colors are proper now, I want to point out. Uh, is it brown? Fur? <laughs> <laughs> mm, okay. Dot, dot, dot. Freak. They just gave up. On question eight, they just gave up. Uh, you are getting sleepy. None of, the, none of these make sense. One, well, one of them does. Brown. That is a color. Tyler, what's your favorite song slash artist? Is it Alvin and the Chipmunks? Do you want to be a chipmunk, Tyler? We'll just go ahead and mark that one. Yeah, clearly. Uh, not Soldier Boy. Suja Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is an old ass quiz. <laughs> Halloween theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Sending postcards from a plane crash. That's a song. I don't know. I don't even know. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, or is it Brick House? Sending postcards from a plane crash. Okay. I have a feeling the secretary at KBHS News at five probably put this one together at like four forty five. On a Friday. Having just flown over from Korea for an exchange <laughs> program. Uh, I'm going to go Suja Boy. <laughs> <laughs> just because. Just because. Mm -hmm. Tyler, number 10. Do you like this quiz? Yes. I want to take it again. <laughs> no, it is horrible. Uh -huh. It is decent. This is a quiz. IDK. I almost want to say this is a quiz because it's so... This is a quiz? Bad, but I'm going to say no, it's horrible. No, it is horrible. Mm -hmm. I think that just this is a quiz period would actually be more fitting. <laughs> just like, <laughs> how do you feel about this quiz, Dave? This is a quiz. <laughs> uh, so I will go with this is a quiz. Just pretend that it's a period instead of a question mark. Uh, Quiblo is so awful that in full of ads that is pretty much just stopped my laptop from working so <laughs> hopefully we don't lose this episode because of because of this awesome quiz we'll see <laughs> we'll see still not reacting okay we'll say this is a quiz and next oh we're not done i thought we were done it's tyler a, it's a hundred question <laughs> quiz <laughs> they're really gonna drill down and tell us what squirrel we are tyler what are you having for dinner are you having airplane food? <laughs> Are you having blood? Are you having a home-cooked meal? I don't eat? Or my brother's poop, a.k.a. raisins? <laughs> I guess a home-cooked meal. My brother's meal. poop? Okay, gotcha. <laughs> He's just running around the house, so. <laughs> I'll also go with a home-cooked meal. Although airplane food would be interesting. <laughs> Tyler, last question. Mm -hmm. So let's make it count. Mm -hmm. What kind of squirrel do you want to be? <laughs> Man, that's the fucking, the fucking throw in the towel question. I hate it when sh they do shit like that. Do you want me to choose an answer at random, or would you like to hear the options? Let's, let's hear the options. Tyler, would you like to be a chipmunk? Or would you like to be a house squirrel? Or perhaps a hypno squirrel? Or mm. maybe a flying squirrel? Or lastly, a killer squirrel. A hypno squirrel. A hypno squirrel. Um, I wonder if this defaults, like it just makes all, none of the other questions I hope even so. count. I hope so. Um, we could test it. I feel like I haven't gone chipmunk on any of my answers. I feel like I could check chipmunk and see what happens. Mm. You want to test it out? Or would like, you really like to know what kind of squirrel I really am? Yeah, we need to know what kind okay. of squirrel you really are. Tyler, I would like to be... Man, hypno squirrel's good. Mm -hmm. That would be my answer, but I don't want to answer the same as you. Yeah, because we both might be hypno squirrels. I know, and that wouldn't be interesting. Mm -mm. I'm gonna go house squirrel. Okay. Okay, Tyler. Let's submit. Let's submit your quiz and see what kind of squirrel you Learn are. Learn the natural terrain for the squirrel, the house. <laughs> we got 15 minutes to kill while this process is on Quiblo. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually, what happens is this is getting printed out. Um, on a printer somewhere, and then the secretary reads over it, checks them, and then sends an email to It's Quibble. very sad when they see that I said, no, it is horrible. <laughs> right. Since I suspect dead squirrel. 
There is a uh, giant ad in front of the answers, so let me get rid of that thing. <laughs> oh, 56 seconds to skip it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's cool. So how do we get on this? What, ever size? Ever, ever size? Ad- how do we advertise on here? Yeah. Got to get 56 second tad bog just over your answer. Yeah, there is no way to close this. <laughs> there is no way to close this. We just got to wait. We got 33 seconds left. Oh. It's fine. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> what kind of squirrel do you want to be, Tyler? <laughs> I hope it's like insanely like specific. I hope like it's like you are the the Indo African squirrel of the lower <laughs> of the low of the, the lower, lower Congo. Continent. Yeah, Tyler. Between the years of 1945 and 1954. Here's what kind of squirrel I am. I'm a house squirrel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm a house squirrel. Let's mm-hmm. see if you're a hypno squirrel. Is there a description or is it just all it says is house squirrel? I got to see mine before the big old ad popped up. So let's oh, see. Okay. Let's see if yours is ready now. Now I can close it. Tyler, you want to guess what kind of squirrel you are? I'm a hypno squirrel. Tyler, you're a flying squirrel. Hmm, I didn't want to be a flying squirrel quiz. Tyler, you will be turned into a flying squirrel. <laughs> You will like to fly. You will live in the forest and love eating acorns and other nuts. Good day. I added the good day. So the Quiblo wizard is being sent over here now, (laughs) being dispatched to turn us into squirrels. Which I know you don't want to be a flying squirrel, so you better fucking hide your ass right now. (laughs) Uh, I got 34 seconds to... The Quibzard. Before the Quiblo wizard allows me to view my result. (laughs) Um, I've got ad blocker in Firefox, so what I'm seeing right now is just a big white window where ads would be, <laughs> <laughs> with a thing saying, uh, "You got like 25 seconds to skip this ad." <laughs> Fuck, because I was about to ask what it was for. So I don't know. I can't tell you. I can tell it's trying to load a video. I bet it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's your computer just struggling. Trying to make it through all the ads and shit. Yeah, the fan just kicked in. That's always a great sign. <laughs> I don't think I've even heard your computer do that before. I got to have a lot of porn tabs open in order for that to happen. <laughs> all right, I can finally close this son of a bitch. Tyler, I'm a house squirrel. Mm-hmm. You will be a house squirrel. You will be a neat freak and keep nuts in the nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> K.A. the cookie jar. <laughs> That's it. Man, that that might be the worst quiz we've ever taken. That's saying a lot, too. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close Quiblo now, and I know it won't be forever, but we'll be back, Quiblo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Get through Quiblo. All right, we're going to take... We're going to take a 20-minute break from mining Bitcoin on this machine (laughs) to take a Quiblo quiz. So now that we know what kind of squirrels we are. Which is very important. Yeah. Four conquers bad for a day. Uh, You want to talk about the tipping point? I do. I want to talk about the tipping point. And I want to talk about how this came. Like, here's my biggest fear. Mm -hmm. My biggest fear is that people listening, our wonderful listeners, will be like, pretty convenient. Pretty convenient you're talking about this tipping point. Um, like we prepped it in advance. Mm-hmm. I want to just say that we did not prep this in advance. Yeah. Like it was seconds before we turned the microphones on. Um, I had, we had said pretty much at the same time that just the N64 games are bad. Yeah. I have not had a, like I've had a few good experiences, but like on the whole, it's like I, these games have like, I've played them for like an hour and then been like, God, I don't want to. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I do not want to play this game anymore. That's because, man. Whenever I was playing this game, and I just like sat down the controller, and I was like, man, <laughs> I just, I just do not look forward to this every week playing these games. I'm glad that I'm not alone because it's like it sucks because I want to do the show mm-hmm. and I want to be knowledgeable about what we're about to talk about. But man, gaining that knowledge is. Not a fun experience. I think I think it really doubled down playing Banjo Tooie and then Conquers Bad Fur Day is just like a double dose of the same fucking medicine with the same flaws and the same shit. Like, man, they're just 
Because like I, like I was talking about like last week or maybe the week before about like this is what they're they're the first breakthrough into this kind of gaming, and I feel like I guess maybe people think this is Rare's golden age where Rare could do no wrong because Rare did the same fucking thing for seems like every one of their games really, and because it was this is new mm-hmm. and it came about where today's gamers were at a young age. So it's just like there's so much strong nostalgia and it's cool to play like now these new 3D games, but it's still like, man, all of these games, you do the exact same thing. I think for me, it's 3D platforming. Yeah. Honestly, I do. Because it's, I mean, I've liked Mario Tennis. Mm-hmm. I've liked um, Diddy Kong Racing. And that was a rare game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've liked Resident Evil too, but I mean, I kind of, that's, right. that's a that's fringe, everywhere. right? Yeah. Um, but man, the three D platformers, I just I I don't like them. I do yeah. not like to play them. I think you're right because like everybody was always so crazy about Mario sixty four, and I could never play it very long. Yeah, I'm just not big on three D platformers either. Just like just the camera fighting the camera, and then like not, not these are that. it's so early on now. Yeah. You know, like three D platformers now. I'm I'm fine with name one for me. Name a 3D platformer for me. Because I was kind of thinking earlier today, I was like, maybe I just don't like 3D platformers. Maybe I'm like Tyler in the regard mm-hmm. where like, you don't like racing games. Um, so maybe it's just a genre that's not for me. And I kind of sat there and I was like, okay, but what is a modern 3D platformer? Is that like Assassin's, Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed. But see, that's got like stuff mixed in. Because that's like, I don't really like the platforming elements of it's Assassin's Creed. It's got way more than just parkour right it's got stealth in it i mean there's combat in that i I feel like in the beginning times in the space invaders period Mm -hmm. of 3d platforming like all you did was platform and then maybe occasionally have kazooie poop an egg at somebody (laughs) because yeah we're it's a game where you're just the goal is just jumping on three-dimensional platforms from the start to a goal that doesn't like blend in several different genres Rayman, I hear, is like a great new 3D platformer. I've never played it, yeah. but like that is on my it's on my wish list now because I want to play that game. And I feel like if I play Rayman Legends and don't like it, it's just straight up I don't like this genre. Yeah, I've got it over there for the PS3. Well, fuck, now I have to borrow it. <laughs> I didn't want to add it to my list, but I, I will play it because honestly, I do want to know. Yeah, and I've heard from multiple reviews and people that I know personally that that is the pinnacle of 3D platforming right now. Okay, because really, I mean, and I guess I guess that was sort of the the thing to do on the N64 because you've got your shooters, you've got you know some things like that, and they break through, of course, with GoldenEye. But so much on this list, that's that's what it's about. So and just like. The 3D modeling at the time of just being like these textured walls with tons of space. The camera's always super wonky. You don't know what the fuck to do. You're trying to move it around. It never moves the way you want it to. They're all fidgety, aren't they? Because it's like, here's the thing. I felt like playing a 2D platformer, even um, the Kirby game for N64, with it being 2.5D, was fine. Yeah. Because... I'm not fiddling with the controls. Like when I played Banjo Kazoo or Banjo Tooie and and Conquer, dude, like half the time I spent playing the game, it was like, okay, well, I gotta stand here and like maneuver the character there. And it's like, okay, and I gotta do this kind of jump. And I I could do the jump and I fail at it. So it's like, okay, well, I gotta try it again. And then I go and like get and then I fidget and then I move the camera over to the mm-hmm. left so that I can see once I jump onto the thing I'm trying to jump on, I wanna be able to see where I'm going. Yeah. But like, and it, it just feels like this jerky, like I, 3D platform to me feels like being in a traffic jam. It's like, I get to go, I get to move eight inches and then I got to stop and then I got to wait and then I get to move eight inches again and then I got to stop. Yeah. Um, but 2D platforming just feels like, okay, this is fast. This is smooth. Mm-hmm. I can go, I can just, okay, I jump here and it's all really fast and fluid. Um, I guess it's like. It's almost like Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat, where like Mortal Kombat's like super jerky and, yeah. and hectic, and like Street Fighter's more animated and fluid. Fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fun. Yeah. <laughs> There's the word I was looking for. I always just want to, so far, every game on this list, I just want to zoom out. I just want to zoom out and see what the fuck is around me. Yeah. And I feel like I'm always just like the camera's right up on your ass, yes. and you can't see 
well, even when you where zoom you're out. going, like it's just because you can in some of these games you can zoom out, but it's such a cock tease because yeah. it's like, all right, we're gonna zoom out, and then it's like five feet back. Yeah, it's like okay, great, fantastic. I don't, I still can't see anything. Cause man, all right, cause banjo banjo tui, I just did, I just didn't enjoy. Yeah, I know there are reasons why I probably didn't. And we've had some really supportive listeners, I feel like. Yeah. Because, like, I'm, I haven't run across a listener who was like, you motherfuckers are wrong. Yeah. Either there hasn't been any feedback or it's been people saying, I understand. Yeah. I get it. But what scares me is some of those people, the other side of that coin is, I get it, but you'll love Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. Oh, fuck. It's like more pressure. No, everybody, <laughs> everybody. Like, I don't, I, I cannot fathom. That Banjo Kazooie is that good. That much better than Banjo Tooie? Yeah. That and the, everybody. I mean, I've seen I've watched so many videos on the internet where everybody's like, Banjo Kazooie, best game ever made. And it's just like, no, it's not. No, that, it's not. It can't be. It can't be. <laughs> this here's my theory. We can of course get to this more when we actually play Banjo Kazooie. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Banjo Kazooie had to be the Super Mario Brothers three of the following generation. Yeah. It just had to be. Because it's like Super Mario Brothers 3, man, what a great game. But like if you picked like even if like my sister, who's 21 years old, played Super Mario Brothers 3, I feel like she'd be like, what is this shit? Hmm. It has to be, it has to be like a it has to be like a cultural gap. It has and, to be. And everybody, it it how can it not be like the biggest chunk of it not be nostalgia classes. How can it not be like people just like remembering being young and when you're young and you play shit like that, everything's the best. Every, everyone's fucking like, all right, I'm gonna get here, here's my political <laughs> rant about like nostalgia <laughs> glasses. Because right. like everyone I see on Fox News are talking about how everything was better back in the day. Values were better. Every single thing was better. It's because they were little. It's because they were kids, and everything's awesome. <laughs> it's because they were white. Yeah, it's because they're white, <laughs> and it's just awesome being white. <laughs> Remember, yeah. in, like, in like the 60s, if you were male and white, it yeah. was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't beat that. You can't beat that. So it's just like... I wish I remember like the feeling of how just fucking excited I was picking up any game at Toys R Us and how awesome everything was. Yeah. So it's just like, how can stuff like everything, everything from when you were little for the rest of your life, thinking back on it and not just being like, man, that was so great. They just don't do shit like that anymore. It was so great. I think they were talking about it on the crack, most recent Crack mm. podcast where they were talking about nostalgia. Oh, really? And how they, I, see, I haven't listened to the latest one. It was diagnosed as a mental illness because soldiers were having um, nostalgia for their home on the battlefields and they were just getting slaughtered. And they were, ha- they were nostalgic about how, how we used to fight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. All right, so I guess that being said... <laughs> Are anyone still listening? <laughs> conquers, conquers Bad Fur Day, which I, okay, I have to say now, Conquers Bad Fur Day does have, I give it its due in that it does something that I, I just feel like I haven't seen outside of like an indie computer game. What's that? It's unrelentlessly, unrelentlessly, relentlessly crass. Yeah. And to have that at its time period for the Nintendo is unfucking real. Yeah. That they got away with all the shit they say. This game was released on the Xbox and they cleaned it up. Really? I didn't yeah. I knew they released it on the Xbox. I didn't yeah, know they no, cleaned it they, up. They cl- they fucking, even on the Xbox, where like the majority of people are playing Call of Duty with their headsets, <laughs> just saying the worst, most yeah, vile the, shit. Yeah. No, 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 no. Conquer's Bad Fur Day, clean that up. <laughs> Whitewash that shit. We are not. We are Microsoft. <laughs> Tyler, do you hear that? Yes. Sounds like it's two old guys ranting. ranting. That's exactly. It's the rant train. <laughs> Just left the station uh, and rolling in the Tadpog Annex Two, which of course ushers in a segment that we like to call Dave reads from Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys. Okay, anyone still listening? <laughs> Conquer's bad fur day is an action platform video game developed by Rare for the Nintendo 64 video game console. 
It was released on 5 March 2001. Strictly Europeans play the N64 <laughs> and edit the Wikipedia entries for them. Um, that was in North America, even though they list North America first. I don't know. And it, it came out It came out like a month later in Europe um, as part of the Conquer video game series. And that's con- C-O-N-K-E-R, for those of you who are not familiar mm-hmm. with Conquer the Squirrel. Uh, it's playing words. Ray likes to do that sometimes. <laughs> like uh, Diddy's Conga Quest. Like Conquest. They like playing on Conquest and conquering a lot. <laughs> hmm. Although visually similar to Rare's family oriented Nintendo 64 platformers, the content of Conquer's Bad Fur Day is designed for mature audiences. Mm-hmm. Sorry, mature audiences. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> mature if there's a Massachusetts. <laughs> the game contains graphic cartoon violence, alcohol use, tobacco use, profanity, vulgar humor dark humor, Mm -hmm. and pop culture references, including several film parodies. I don't know why that's included in the list of things that make it mature. Man, those film parodies. (laughs) (laughs) Conker's Bad Fur Day follows the story of Conker, the squirrel. Let me guess, he's having a bad fur day. Mm -hmm. A greedy, heavy-drinking red squirrel who is attempting to return home to his girlfriend, Barry. The gameplay is composed... Barry Barry Burton. Barry Burton. (laughs) Barry Burton Squirrel. <laughs> the gameplay is composed. Have you have you listened to the German people try to say squirrel? Have you seen that? Squee- squirrel. <laughs> That's fake, Squee- right? Squirrel. I don't want it to be it's fake. It's a weird word. <laughs> so I can imagine, like, I mean, the way we pronounce everything in America is so different from, like, when I hear someone British talk, it's like, well, it does look like it would sound like that. So I understand. <laughs> Except for aluminum. That one always gets me. It's it like, looks. I, I think it looks like aluminum. There's, like, where's the extra I coming from? Okay. Or did we just change the word? We had to have just changed the word. Maybe we did. Because I, I can't know. believe like a whole country was just like, yeah, there's totally an I there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Barry Burton, right. You're trying to get to Barry Burton. Uh, the gameplay is composed of various challenges involving platforming, mainly, solving puzzles, fighting enemies, and gathering objects. Uh, these challenges are split across multiple chapters, each with a different theme. Uh, the game also features a multiplayer mode where a maximum of four players can compete in seven different game types. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game was developed was in development for four years and was originally intended for a family audience under the title Conquer's Quest, then retitled 12 Tales Conquer 64. However, the prototype fell under criticism, being deemed both too cute and similar to Rare's earlier platform games. Uh, Rare was influenced by this reception and decided to retool the game for mature audiences. So Rare, Rare got pissed and was like, fine, we'll be fucking different. Fine, we will make no money off of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day received critical acclaim from video game critics who praised its visual appeal and smart, funny humor. I don't know about smart. Yeah, humor. yeah, no. It's certainly there are big chunks that are not like low hanging fruit. Yeah, like so. No, yeah. I don't know. So uh, like Dave Barry's, like I'm very intimidated by the humor of. <laughs> uh, no, Dave Barry Burton. Dave Barry Burton. <laughs> <laughs> it sold poorly due to limited advertising and a release towards the end of the N64's life cycle, but earned a cult following due to its unique styling. A remake titled Conquer mm-hmm. Live and Reloaded with enhanced graphics, and a new multiplayer was released for the Xbox in 2005. Okay. Really, if they were to release this game, a modded version of this game, with one change, instead of Conquer, if it was Sean Miller, of hashtag Miller <laughs> fame. Because I feel like if you were to take Sean Miller and just like if you were to push take- him all to the extremes <laughs> and then make a game out of that, it would be Conker's Mad Fur Day. If he were to take the what squirrel are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just conquer. That's it. Definitely conquer. Period. Like at the beginning where it's like, where it's conquered with the crown where he's like setting down with all the people around him, it zooms out slowly. Yeah. If that was just like Miller, like on like a recliner at his house and everybody's are all I love us around shirt. him. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is, I asked him, I wanted him on, I wanted him to play this and come yeah. on. Cause I feel like it is the humor and the story and the tone is everything, everything Sean Miller, but he had a charity event tonight and he couldn't make it. That doesn't sound very conquer. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> I uh, liked this game a lot better than Banjo Tooie. Yeah. A lot better. It looks a lot better. 
yeah, this it styled the same way. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like they didn't really fix that criticism that they got, where it look kind of looks the same because mm-hmm. it it looked the same to me a little bit because mm-hmm. it's like. And I swear, Blizzard... The, le- the level design. Yeah, the level design, yeah, and the art assets, I kind of feel like they had to have reused some things because, like, even, like, the um, like the roof tiles and stuff like that look really similar <laughs> to, like, Banjo-Tooie. I kind of feel... I meant to say this when we were talking about Banjo-Tooie, but, man, I feel like Blizzard borrowed a lot from ra- rare N64 games when they did World of Warcraft because it's like oh it yeah, looks man. really similar to me like when i was playing banjo tooie and it was reinforced when i played conquer's bad fur day i was like man it looks like i'm straight strolling through alliance territory mm-hmm. cuz like the gra- like the colors and like the cartoony style in while it's still being polygonal um totally gave me that vibe which i like but it also kind of was like man i wish i was playing world of warcraft instead of conquer <laughs> <laughs> because man yeah playing through it like you you play it you play it for the story and the writing and see what they're going to come up with next. You're not just like, man, I just want a solid type platformer. No, no, move move on. Uh, it's it's super slow starting off, super slow. Um, I will say because it has a few unique features. Of course, talked about the story, uh, the context moments. I feel like are unique and funny in which there are points in the game where you just go and stand on it. And you'll just get an item that helps you just right then for something you need to do. Mm-hmm. And those are always unique and sort of fun. Yeah. It's a uh, cinematic. It's essentially, it creates a cut scene. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, the, the voice acting is strange, but at the same time, I enjoyed it. I think it was good for an N64 game. Yeah. Especially. But Be- yeah, it was, it was kind of strange. Because it, it, it's like they just cut and paste like these weird voice segments just into it where it seems like there's almost like an audible like start click, and stop click. yes where they say something yeah. that sound quality is not great so it sounds right. weird right but it's compressed it's heavily compressed yeah it's well for what it is it's well done and it's from what i played i did not finish it i tried to but pretty much it was fully voice acted mm-hmm. i don't think there was anything i ran across that wasn't Voice actors. So it's a banjo too. We just made like someone's like laughing and cutting it off or stifling a sneeze. Yeah, that's just all the fucking noises that they make. Which, and then there's text, which drove Nikki crazy. By the oh, way, the man. whole time I played it and someone was talking, she was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> no, and yeah, these were actually voice yeah. acted. I feel like Conquer looks good. Conquer was made of like he was round. He wasn't a bear made of triangles. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So I feel like it, yeah, it's it's a improvement from Banjo-Tooie. I don't know what came out first. I'm glad it's a higher than Banjo-Tooie in the list. I think Banjo-Tooie came out first because they specifically mentioned how late in the N64's oh, okay. life this game came out. And clearly, like, what Conquer doesn't require the expansion, and it's pushing, like, there's got to be nothing left for the N64 to give. Yeah, running, running, conquer's bed for a day. It might be. I had the. I have the expansion pack in my N sixty four. It might be one of those things where if you have it, it utilizes it. Mm-hmm. If you don't, I bet obviously it doesn't. it doesn't. I bet it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> but I got. Let's see. I played far enough to get to like the iconic boss. Of the game. What the name? What the game is sort of known for? And that I don't know what that is. That is the the shit boss. Okay, so. Maybe we took different paths at the fork. Okay. I'm curious. Because you can go... I used a guide. I straight up. Okay. Because I was playing, and then, like, it's not... The game is really bad about letting you know when you're done with something. Like, how do you mean? Like, if you've finished your goal, whatever your goal is... Oh, like, yeah. You might just see a door open somewhere, maybe. Or yeah. or nothing. You just right. have to kind of figure out where you're, yeah. where you're walking to or going. Because I finished the first zone, um, I went the different direction. I, I didn't use a guide, uh, which was a mistake because I put a lot of time into this game. But I- I'm not gonna lie to you, I did have fun playing it. Mm-hmm. Like, I- it's tough because I had fun playing it, but like not the amount of fun where I was like, I want to play something different. Yeah, it was like the amount of fun where it was like, I guess I can continue doing this so we can talk about it on it's the a, show. It's a freemium. It's the freemium game <laughs> quality yes, of fun. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I didn't do the I didn't do the whole poo level. Mm-hmm. I tried it, uh, and I got completely lost. What you know, fucking humor, fecal humor, <laughs> drives me crazy. Yeah, and man, 
they just went for it. Uh-huh. And like, there's a whole world. I, I'm not. It. I'm not amused by it. So I'm playing this level, and you're I'm just too, you're knowing. Too mature. Yeah, too mature. <laughs> I'm playing through it, just like, oh, really? Okay, all right. And there's this, and they do the same thing. I feel like it's very strongly done on on all the poo related stuff. Is it? It's so repetitive. Yeah. It's yeah. All of these games, all these NC4 games, are basically fetch quests where you gather items everywhere, and then you do something similar all over again. You'll just do that same task three, four, five times. In a different place. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Conquer was even worse about it than Banjo 2. Really? See, I didn't. I didn't feel mm. like I was just collecting things. That was my because, big complaint oh, about Banjo 2. Is like, I had to collect these music notes. I have to collect... I gotta collect all this shit. But in Conquer, I didn't... I guess it wasn't... It's not like having to collect things over again, but the task yes. that the game gives you, you have to do them so many times. Like the first time whenever you find those two blocks on top of each other and that mouse wants cheese. Yes. I was like, okay, I go through this big ordeal to open this gate and get this walking cheese. Right. Maneuver through these blocks, try to do it timely enough so the cheese doesn't escape from me because it's a lie. Will that happen? Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you don't do it quick enough. Gotcha. So, because if you, it, it'll, it's time where if you have to wait for those blocks that are moving. Yeah. If you have to wait for both of them. Which will fucking totally squish your ass. Yeah. One thing I like about Conquer is like, you, Conquer gets hit, blood fucking goes all over the place. <laughs> yeah. But right before you get there, the cheese will escape. Okay. So then you have to basically do that all over again. I do like how the cheese, like, this is where dark humor comes in. Because mm-hmm. there was a, this is a part of the game, Tyler, where I wasn't sure how I felt. Like, because it was funny, but at the same time, I was like, God damn, I don't know if I want to give the cheese to the mouse. Because <laughs> the fucking cheese is like struggling against you. Please, and no, like, please, let begging me you not to feed it to the mouse. And <laughs> yeah. it was like one of those things where I was like, Holy shit, this is making me feel something. <laughs> <laughs> but I like I go through all this shit, I give him the piece of cheese, and he's like, Man, I go for another one. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, <laughs> fine. I go, I do it all over again, give it to him. Ah, oh, one more ought to do. Oh, this is just lazy. Yeah, this is just yeah. lazy programming. I did think the same thing. I don't feel like that came into play like super often. Well, in, in the in the poo levels, oh. like because you have to like you're trying to fill up this like sewer thing full of shit, full of cow shit. So, and there's this bull defending it. How'd you figure that out? I got to the bull mm-hmm. and I was like, all right, here's a bull. And they're like, I could not, I tried to hit him, hitting him with my frying pan. Mm-hmm. That really didn't do anything. Um, you have to lure him over to hit a wall that has a target on it, and I, then you can jump on his back and steer him around and ride him. I didn't see any targets. Yeah. Well, you have to go, well, you have to get the prune juice. You have to lock loose the I saw the, the sign juice. for the prune juice. You climb up, and then there's like a wheel that you can spin that releases the prune juice that will bring the targets that you hit that brings the cows who drink the prune juice and then will shit into the hole. This is a hard game to play without a guide. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, it really is. It doesn't, because you don't, it doesn't make sense to the goals. And you have to, the you thing have to, is I like. I stumbled upon uh, that bull is the <laughs> other thing where it's like, I didn't. I didn't know that there was a bull and that I had to get to it. I straight mm-hmm. up just stumbled. Like, I wandered around a sewer for an hour mm-hmm. and then stumbled upon a bull and then shrugged. And then, like, I, like, tried for 30 minutes. So I was like, okay, this is a bull. It's talking. It's definitely a boss. <laughs> like, I figured that out. I was like, this has got to be a boss. Mm-hmm. And then I was like. Sort of. <laughs> I was like, how do you beat it? And I couldn't figure that out. I the, he's in this arena. He's in this round mm. arena that I dude. I walked around this fucking thing for like twenty minutes, mm. and that is actually when I turned the game off. Yeah, like, no, uh, I don't blame you. It's, I was it sucks. I was in so deep when I got to that, and it was like I because honestly, man, I I think the time logged on this was eight and a half hours. I was eight and a half hours into the game when I got to that point, and it was. I just I was done. Mm-hmm. I was done. And we I mean it was time to record and all that good stuff. Yeah. But I mean, even then I was like, all right, I'm pretty ready to like play something else. Yeah, because because once you do that, well the cows come down and the cow gets diarrhea and the cow has to go it's the very bull? embarrassed. Or there's a cow that you, shows you up. bring the cows, once you hit like this, there'll be other targets that when you, you steer the bull into a hit it and it'll release the cows out of the pen and then He looks like the bull from Looney Tunes, by the way. Yeah, you know the one true. I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. 
Because once the cow comes down, it has like the prune juice, it gets diarrhea, it shits. Well, before it shits, you have to you have to hit it. You have to steer the bull to hit it. The first one you hit once, it takes a shit. And then what do you think you have to do after that? You have to hit it again and murder it. It explodes. <laughs> and then so you have to do it again. Second cow comes out. have to hit that cow twice before it shits, and then you murder it. Third cow comes out. Hit it three times before it shits, and you murder it. And then the bull falls through the sewer grate. And then you have to go after it, and it's just... And there's another point in the game where... Uh, like where the dung beetles are around around the the king shit pile, yeah. And basically, you just have to push balls of shit up mountains, and you do like this long thing pushing it. Another one pops out. You have to do it all, push it somewhere. Fucking third one comes out. Fucking fourth one comes out. Fucking fifth one comes out. It's Tyler, just like this is smart humor. Though. Oh man. Oh yeah. So smart. <laughs> so fucking smart. But the only the. Big thing, the big crescendo is finally like the dung beetles when you're allied with them finally and they're telling you like, we don't know what's happening, we're disappearing, we don't know where anybody's coming, going, or you find out there's basically the Golgotha shit demon okay. is there and has been taking the dung beetles and you have to get it to spawn. So there are pieces of corn running around. So you have to go and grab the corn and throw the corn in the bigger shit piles that then the poo monster comes up out of it and the corn is his teeth and he does sing impressive opera because he does <laughs> he sings this uh long opera about poo and shit and grabbing conquer and shoving conquer up his butt and all sorts of stuff and then you have to go to your context moments that you get toilet paper and you toilet paper the shit demon to death after a very very long and frustrating fight okay but i feel like whatever you hear about conquer's bad fur day this is what you hear about. Okay. I went in knowing pretty much nothing about Conker's Fur Day, mm-hmm. other than um, it's expensive. Yeah, it's fucking expensive. And I don't know why. I've, I've searched for it. I'm like, why is Conker's Bad Fur Day expensive? I mean, it can't be that rare. Yeah. It can't be that rare. I mean, it's a rare game, so surely they produce a lot. <laughs> rare capital R. Right. <laughs> so. I mean, I would think so, after they produced several games for the N64, I can't believe they'd be like, well, this is a small run. I don't have the numbers, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard for me to believe that, that that they would just do a small run of a game. So I think this game, what, came out 2001. So when did when did South Park come out? Way, Mid-90s? Way before 2001, yeah. Because I was like a sophomore in high school, which would have been like 90... I don't want to say that. This is like, this is, it's, the humor is similar to early, early South Park. Early That yeah. uh, didn't really Mr. have Mr. Hanky, yeah. Anal Probe, like, yeah. this is, this is basically South Park, the game with a squirrel. That's, that's fair. And a l- little less racism. A little, a little less. <laughs> sexism. Fucking, yeah. Sexism abounds. Especially with the. The sunflower. Yeah. The huge breasted <laughs> sunflower. That you just have to like annoy it until a giant bee can fuck it. Well, you tickle it. You tickle it with bees. <sighs> it it doesn't want to have sex, no. so you have to tickle it till it exposes its breasts, and then the king bee gets to fuck it. That's the thing that happens in the game. Yeah, yeah. That's a thing. That's also a thing that probably was like not as cringy in two thousand one as it is now. <sighs> yeah, we're like, I mean, really, we were talking about like what rape in the LSD was it the LSD Dream Emulator. Or another game where, like, it's just, like, it's just there. It's just a thing. Because, <laughs> like, the bee's frustrated because, like... Custer's Revenge is what yeah. you thinking. <laughs> the bee, like, the king bee, like, he's turned his back on his wife and gotten kicked out because yeah. all he could think about is how much he wants to pollinate this flower and mm-hmm. get at her stigmas, and he just wants her so bad it consumes him. To be fair, the flower is a lot hotter than his wife. Mm-hmm. I did see his wife earlier in the game. <laughs> if I were given the choice... <laughs> He, he did make fun of her because she's a fat bitch, yeah. quote unquote. <laughs> so, but like, Flower's not interested, and he'll he'll give you he'll give you money if you just help him fuck this flower. Yeah, and she she doesn't want to, so you have to trick her into it. It's just like fuck, and then she lets you uh, bounce on her boobs. Yep, her giant sunflower tits. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you didn't like that part. <laughs> Now that that part I'm fine with. <laughs> That's consensual. She asks you if you'd like yeah. a bounce. Yeah. <sighs> Let's over more of my note. The hit detection is awful because your default weapon is a frying pan. Yeah. And which I rarely used. Man, 
I could never hit anything without being right up on it. Yeah. And it's just like flip a coin whether you're going to get hit or you're going to hit it. <laughs> yeah. Because there's this one point where you're trying to climb this mountain. There are these carnivorous worms. Mm-hmm. And... Man, can you hit those? I died. You can. I died really? so many fucking times. I just times. jumped around them. That's eventually what I did. Yeah. I went to the top, and it's like, oh, oh, this is for nothing. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> exactly. All right. And of course, the game doesn't tell you that. It's no. just there at the beginning. Like uh-huh. you, you would naturally think, like, all right, what's off to the left? This is the closest thing. Right. After I finish on the right, it's probably where I'm supposed to go. No, no, not even close. <laughs> what about the um, first person shooter elements of the game? There's no there's no iron sights. Right. There's no reticule to let you know where you're So you don't you don't know where you're shooting or and the camera angle is Sometimes you get a slingshot. Yeah. And sometimes you're throwing knives. And it's like I understand that I understand that when you use those things in real life, you don't have a targeting reticule. Mm. You just don't. But because this game is like it's <laughs> right, it's all about exactly. the real life experience. Yeah. Like even if it was like a crudely drawn reticule or something like that, mm-hmm. I think that would be cool. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? I think Conquered is the best looking game we've done so far. Uh, they say shit a lot, which I appreciate. Like they 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 censor out fuck when they clearly mean fuck, but otherwise, like shit and bastard and bitch ass abound all over the place. I will say, let me let me throw this out there. Sometimes the censorship icons are mm-hmm. pink, and I think the other times uh, they're blue or a different color. Here's my theory on that. I was wondering. I was like, uh. what is going on? This is a very British game. Mm-hmm. Like everyone, except for, I guess, Conker. I guess Conker's, he doesn't really sound British to me, but like all the other characters in this game sounded. He, he sounds sort of Cockney. Yeah, okay. They, they sound very British to me. The game fucking opens. I mean, it opens with him on the throne. Well, there's mm-hmm. another yeah. there's another very British thing, a throne with a crown. Um, and then it cuts to Conquer going to a pub. Mm-hmm. And then a very old fashioned pub. And he leaves the pub. So like the clo- the cock and something. Yeah, cock and barrel, or I don't know what yeah. the fuck. Um, and he leaves the pub and now he's talking to everybody and all of them all of them have British accents. So that was a thing that I obviously noticed about this game was not only like how crass it was, but it was just straight up like this is not these are not American voice actors, or yeah. if they are, they're doing a British accent. So with that in mind, um, I think that they censored out fuck, and I think they censored out cunt. But that's fair, yeah. Because <laughs> I think that I think that cunt was the pink censored out words. Your band that makes sense. I, I, I'm with you. Uh, let's see. The 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 story and the humor I was mostly on board for until the poo level. Then I just didn't. Then I just didn't care. Um, did you make it past the poo level, or did you stop that? I started a water level and fucking threw in the towel. I wasn't gonna mess with it. So that's like, not the end. No, like I mean, I know. No. I know. Like the big bad is totally the guy, the Panther King. Yeah, it, who looks like, or maybe that scientist. I don't know. Maybe it looks like Shere Khan fucked Bagheera, <laughs> and then they had this. This baby, <laughs> and that's that's the ki- the current king when the game mm-hmm. starts. And then yeah, there's that probably the bot, yeah, weasel scientist and the other weasels who look like they're just straight out of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> now the game, from what I, I I looked into it, like I like scrolling on that guide, like man, this game's a lot longer. And is uh, it really? It yeah, really is it's a lot like, longer. Like how much longer? The like, water, like I started the water level, and it's just like. Man, I haven't played a water level this frustrating since Sonic the Hedgehog. Ooh. And I'm not, I have no interest in fucking with this anymore. Because there's a whole thing where, like, the screen lighting, like, whenever it's dark, it's really dark. It's too dark to be able to see what you're doing. Yeah. So that at one point in the water level, you have to go and get air bubbles. And really? It's, and it's super. So it is straight up Sonic yeah. style. And it's, and it's super dark. And the camera's super close to you, and you're trying to maneuver around. When no. you're when you're about to drown, like the big numbers show up on the screen, and it dun 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 dun. Because well, you, you've got dun, Conker's dun. face that gets. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. So cool. no, uh, uh-uh. uh, can't fucking do it. Really cool. All right. So, hey, yeah, I was done at that point. Hey, I didn't hate this game. I didn't hate it either. Like Banjo Tooie, like I sat down and I didn't enjoy any of it. And this game, like the platforming, is frustrating. I feel like there are a lot of like 
mechanical aspects that are poor, but they do something really different and they got away with it. Yeah. So that it's it's worth it alone just to experience. Like I don't know, I can't think of another game like on a console that even comes close to this. I mean, I guess around the same time, was there a Final Fantasy VII was out. Yeah. But it was it cursed and everything in an entirely Barely. different way. Yeah. I mean, Barrett and Sid would say "damn" and "bitch," but like nothing close to what Tifa said "cunt" that one time. <laughs> <laughs> So they beat they beat. Tifa Kogger. said, "If I were an NES, I would have my <laughs> my power button deep in this pussy." Did was there a Duke Nukem console port? I feel like there might have been. Not that I remember. Okay. I guess Duke Nukem is the closest thing. Kind of, sorta. I mean, it's, I mean, it had strippers in it. Yeah. That I was super excited when I heard about because Cockmaster Shake told me like, "Yeah, you go up and you hand them a twenty and they show you their boobs," and I like. I played the game. I was like super excited to get to that point. <laughs> I can't jerk it to this. <laughs> so it just... I was impressed that death had a whole like thing. Yeah, Whenever the you first die. time you die. Yeah. That is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you show up in the underworld, and death is there. Mm-hmm. And is extremely frustrated because it's a rule, I guess, of the universe that he has to make exceptions for two creatures, cats and squirrels. I, I assume, he doesn't come right out and say it, but I assume cats get nine tries. Mm-hmm. Um, meanwhile, squirrels get as many fucking tries as As many they as they to. feel they should have. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what happens when you lose all of your lives. I never did. I do. Yeah, what, what happens? <laughs> I do. Not a whole lot. Um, you start... Pretty much just right back from the the beginning of the level that you were at. Because this game auto saves, Mm -hmm. but gives you no indication at any time when it saves. Tell me about being really scared to turn it off the first time. Yeah, because I left that N sixty four on, and then it got to the point where I was like, "Fuck it, fuck it." If it if I lose my save, I know how to get back to this point pretty quickly, Mm -hmm. and I can just do it again. Uh, Because I'm a dad, and it bothers me when there's a red light on in my room that's serving no purpose because it's just like it's just pennies i just see pennies just like rolling out of my coin jar and like just right on down to paducah powers bank and that's doubly worse because you're in like a horrible electric bill situation because paducah powers horrible awful yeah they fucked up yeah they tried to save some money Mm. and then really fucked up and oh guess who gets fucked over Oh, Everybody the they supply power too. Yep. Oh, but I'll just switch to another electric company, Tyler. Mm, no, you, no, you don't. <laughs> you got to move. <laughs> I'm I'm lucky that I'm like right outside of their You're area. You're extremely lucky. Just barely. A lot of people's power bills fucking doubled over that shit. Yep. Straight up doubled. And will stay, and will stay that way for like, for like 10, 15 years. years. Yeah. yeah, is what they estimate. Yeah, I think <laughs> 16 years. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh... Anything else? Just this Sean, this Sean Miller mod I still want. <laughs> I, I guess that's all I have to say about it, really. I think the problems with this game were problems that were indicative of 3D platformers at the time. Yeah. So I try to keep that in mind when I talk about the game and when I try to form an opinion. Uh, I stand by the statement that if you gave me this, Banjo-Tooie, and Bomberman 64, which I think are the only three 3D platformers that we've played so far... Um, I would definitely choose Conquer. Yeah. Out of that, out of that three, like easily, easily, I would choose Conquer. Um, hopefully, when we get to Banjo Kazooie, hopefully, I'll choose Banjo Kazooie out of those four. Hopefully, or Donkey Kong Country, or we lose, or, or we I'm lose sorry. a third of our audience. Donkey Kong sixty four. <laughs> yeah. Because it's just, man, I, think, I, I really, I, I have not played a game yet that I'm like, man, this is like, this is a really good game. I mean, Mario Tennis was fun. Yeah, I've had a few of those moments, thing. but not... I don't like racing, so Diddy Kong Racing didn't really yeah. get me. Resident Evil 2? I've played it better. Yeah, I know. So, Sorry, man. So Mortal I'm Kombat Trilogy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we done fucked up. I think we done fucked up choosing N64 We're games. We're too... It's just, man. I feel like GameCube would have been better, but... I feel like this. If we did PlayStation, it would be the exact same way. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'd have. I know. If we go back to games that I remember enjoying, like yeah. for the PlayStation, I know if I played Parasite Eve now, 
I would be super frustrated by it. But we'd have a bunch of Final Fantasy games at the end to play. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun to try to do two a week. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, so really anything from this console generation, I feel like it's all going to be sort of the same shit with a few exceptions, probably. Mario Party's next. That's going to be different. Yeah. But we have played a lot of Mario Parties. Yeah. Mario Party Tennis are sitting on my shelf right now. So go back to where it started. <laughs> you have any achievements, Dave? Um, Give me yours. <laughs> Maybe I'll have some. Okay. I literally played this game like up until the wire. So I my, haven't had a lot of time. My first one is, got to make that pussy bounce. <laughs> <laughs> and although it has nothing to do with pussy, uh, you do a triple jump off the sunflower's boobs to get to the cache that's hidden behind it. Gotcha. Because you, you have to land perfectly on her breast three times to get propelled high enough. To get fucking money. Yeah. To get fucking money. That was the end of... <laughs> I, I was at the end of the level. I could have just left. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that. I yeah, didn't know. You have no idea what your goals are or what you have to do or what's bonus, what's... Yeah. When, I bounced, when I bounced on their tickle bitties, I caught a glimpse of something in that tunnel that, I, mm-hmm. that you can obviously... Okay, so I was like, all right, obviously I can bounce into that tunnel and that's going to take me to the next area that I need mm-hmm. to go in the game. Mm-hmm. So for 15 minutes, I'm bouncing. It's hard to do. <laughs> I know. It's so hard to do. Because you don't bounce straight up. You bounce like at an arc. So you mm-hmm. have to correct when you're in the air. And like, I understand that it's hard to do when I get the reward because it's like, oh, it's money. It's extra shit. It's, I assume, I don't know what you use money for. To pay the barrel. To pay the barrel? Mm-hmm. Because once you climb up where the, Your the worms are, the barrel at the top, you're like, what do you do? Oh. It's going to cost you a lot of money. I don't know what it does. I don't know how much it takes, but does money is it gets used. you home, probably. Maybe because I guess the whole point of this game is like you get drunk and you wander off and you're trying to get home. Right. Yeah, we failed to mention that. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it, it's so super obtuse. Yeah. You just and it really doesn't come into play past ever. the first ten minutes of yeah. the game where you're. And I thought that was a nice touch. Is you're hung over and in the first like segment of the game you're playing with drunk controls essentially Mm -hmm. which is really cool but it was super scary because i started when i started playing this game i was like oh fuck is this this how this game plays yeah because that drunk conquer is about how it is playing kirby kirby 64 (laughs) not a bad comparison uh my second one is dollar dollar bills (laughs) y'all and that is you get a thousand dollars okay how much do you need for the barrel? Any I idea? don't know. No, okay. no clue. Okay. Didn't didn't read down that far. Um, I guess I'll go with the classic. Who moved my cheese? A <laughs> 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 rich mouse, poor mouse. <laughs> In order to unlock who moved my cheese, uh, you have to feed the mouse, the farting mouse. He's farting. We didn't mention that earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And if you if he belches in your face, you throw up. Right. <laughs> You have to you have to feed them three times, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So that's how you unlock it. You feed the mouse three times to the point where he explodes. Yeah, he 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 farts too much and just explodes. And pieces of watermelon fall from the sky. <laughs> when he dies, it looks like you. It looks like a Gallagher show. Yeah, <laughs> uh, like pieces of mouse watermelon just start raining. Mm-hmm. Except for his ribs, his right. tail. His the, the tail is connected to the ribs. Mm-hmm. Still farting. Still farting. Still farting. So so smart. So smart. <laughs> that's all I got. I came up with that on the fly. I feel like that was pretty that's, good. That's not bad. It's not bad. Tyler? Yes, Dave. Man, I had a good time talking to you about this game. Yeah. I did. I feel, really did. It feels good to just vent. I know. <laughs> the airing of grievances, I feel like. It just happened. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. Mario Party's next. I'm sure we're both going to really enjoy it. Um before we close the show out, I've got a couple questions for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mm-hmm. first of which is, if you were to give this game a beard that sums up how you feel mm-hmm. about it, what kind of beard would it be? It would be the, the prickly, dark blonde soul patch of, of Shawn Michael Miller. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. For obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses, and it better fucking not be Shawn Miller's glasses, what kind of glasses would you give it? I would have to give it the the thin gold spectacles of one <laughs> Sean Michael Miller. Son of a bitch. <laughs> That's okay. I didn't come with achievements, so I feel like... Tyler, 
man, whew, I've got a question for you. Are you ready for this mm-hmm, one? Mm-hmm. I want to know how much this game is on Amazon. On Amazon. So used, how much is Conker's Bad Fur Day on uh, Amazon? $120. A hun- that's a lot, Tyler. Mm-hmm. That is a lot 120 of money. Are you sure you want to go with that? Yeah. You're positive. Yep. Well, there's only you here. Mm-hmm. So you, there's, only way, there's only one way you can lose, and that's to go over. Yep. Okay, keeping that in mind, you want to still go with $120. $120. Okay. All right. Tyler, actual retail value of Conker's Bad Fur Day for the Nintendo 64 used on Amazon at the time of this recording mm-hmm. is... You blew it. Yep. You blew it. Yep. (laughs) But still, that's pretty If I would have went lower, I would have went to 90 and still lost. (laughs) Because they talk about this all the time on our game collecting. It's a pretty expensive game. Mm -hmm. Pretty expensive game. Yep. I I did get this game. I did buy this game. You lucked out getting this game. I worked my ass off. Mm -hmm. I I, I hustled a little bit to get this game. I... Called someone I knew locally who had in sixty not a store. God no, I'm not calling yeah, a fucking, no fucking store way. to buy Conker's Bad Fur Day. I'd pay three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I called a friend that I know locally who had in sixty four games, and he said, "Oh, I used to have that game. I gave it to my neighbor, and I was like, I will buy it from your neighbor for. I could have gone, dude. I could have gone like twenty dollars." And it would have been a deal, but I felt like a shithead. I didn't want to do that. Yeah. I wanted to get a deal on the game, but not like robbing an old lady. Of- yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, "Tell your neighbor I will give them fifty dollars for this game." And it was one. Of the, I got like one of those responses about like fifty dollars. Wow. I was like, "Yes, trust me." I said, "It goes for a lot more than that on the internet." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Oh, okay." Neighbor was cool with it. Went over to his house. Bought the game for fifty dollars. He also couldn't believe that I was giving him fifty dollars for an N sixty four game. Uh, and then, like a week later, I got a text from my friend uh, who used to own the game, and he was like, "Holy shit, you weren't kidding about how much it goes for on the internet." I was like, "No, I wasn't." Yep. So you still you, you got a deal. You got a deal on it. And I've seen it fluctuate. For I said one hundred and twenty because on our game collecting, they say they have seen it upwards of one hundred twenty dollars. And I know Amazon. Is the most expensive option you have to buy used games. Pretty sure I'm going to flip this game. Yeah, I, I would. I do not. Think you sure that you don't want to hold on to this? <laughs> Who knows? I might go back to it. Do you have a guess how much this game is new on Amazon? Five, Just for fun, five hundred dollars. Five hundred bucks. It's pretty expensive. It's not quite five hundred bucks expensive. It's two hundred and ninety-five dollars new, mm-hmm. which I don't feel like. Usually, actually, we have a bigger disparity yeah. between new and used. I don't know. My my recommendation, go ahead and get the new. <laughs> if you're buying the used, just Fine. get the new. Just keep it in the shrink wrap too while you're at it. Yep. Don't don't play it. Just put it on your shelf. <laughs> Be like, I got that. I own that. Yeah, I've got that. This is a game that I honestly um wish that I had emulated instead of playing on the N sixty four. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because um I have seen it emulated in video. What's well, Paul playing today? Um Man, it looks so much better. Yeah. It looks so much better. Like every emulation like that I've seen of like even PlayStation games, so much looks so much better than it looks on the actual console. Yeah. It's just I'm hey, I'm not advocating it, but hey, if you want a game that looks better, don't get the fucking original game. Fucking emulate that shit. <laughs> or or if you want to be a law abiding citizen, buy it and then you're legally allowed to emulate it. So I don't think that's true. I yeah. think that's a myth. Yeah. Mm. I mean I don't really give a shit, but I think it's video, a <laughs> video lawyers who specialize in video games. Let us know. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure Rare is not going to be really mad that um, you emulated this game that they're seeing absolutely no money off yeah, of. It's true. I guess maybe if you bought it on, or the Donald Trump has bought up all the copies, like the diamond <laughs> industry does, and is just slowly releasing some to drive the price up. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe the, I'll buy every copy of Bad uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day I can find <laughs> and just drive that price up. That was a, so there was a Goof Troop episode about that <laughs> <laughs> where there was that's this, how you know it's a good idea. There was this super common card like named like Lefty something some pitcher. Yes, every, everybody's got a Lefty. So this the equivalent of the yes. Goof Troop Mafia goes yes. around and buys up every copy of Lefty. 
to raise to artificially drive the price up. I remember that episode now. Yeah, I do, and I didn't see much Goof Troop. That was one where I feel like I felt like I was getting a little too old when Goof Troop came out, mm. and I think I had to decide. Like I was like, okay, I'm going to allow myself one Disney afternoon cartoon. <laughs> Is it going to be Darkwing Duck or Goof Troop? Ah, uh, we're going to go Darkwing yeah, Duck. Gonna, yeah, well, that's fair. The best thing on Disney when I was young was Flash Forward. Do you ever watch Flash Forward? No, what is that? It's uh now it has the two stars are Jewel State from Firefly. You said now? Like it's still going on? It's not still going, oh, but okay. like the stars now are still oh, gotcha. doing shit. Okay. And then the male lead was Archangel in X three. Oh, okay. Cool. <sighs> what was the show about? Their characters Te- and- <laughs> Teen, teenagers and teen issues. Gotcha. They were best friends who were actually in love and then trying to come to terms with it and still date other people and just all the awkwardness. It was it was an entertaining show. Kind of Clarissa explains it all? Slightly. Okay. Not not as intentionally trying to be different. Okay, gotcha. It's like take away the hot topic elements from Clarissa and you've got flash forward. <laughs> where where her Perfect. where her and Sam are like there's way more tension between her and Sam. Okay. Anything else to say about any of this game or the list? Anything? Anything? Are we ready to? Do we do we know what we're gonna do next for Monday? Do we know that yet? Diablo. Oh, we don't I, have to I do that. I believe it's Diablo. Let's switch that. Uh, Wait, no. Let's. You, I'm reticent about being Diablo, but I know you want to do Diablo, so I'm fine to do no, no, Diablo. No, no, no. We need more time. I, no, we do need more time. Mm-hmm. Back when we originally talked about it, we didn't need more time, but now, like, we definitely need more okay. time. Okay. We could we could do Cool Spot or Yo Noid or something from our Tailspin. Uh, tailspin, that's true. <laughs> Which, we, ha- we haven't heard any strippers yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. Okay, never mind. Um, I'm down for Yo Noid. Yo Noid. I am down for Yo Noid because I remember playing that one as a kid, and I remember much where it's like. Remember when you and I were talking about Beetlejuice, and you were like that. You're like, I'm not sure that was a game, and I was like, Yes, it was because I played it. And it was, I don't remember it being, I remember it being not so great. Yo, Noid, I remember it being awful. Like, I remember, like, as a kid being like, <laughs> holy shit, this game is awful. We'll also try to track down, like, some of the old style Domino's pizza that was really <laughs> awful, too. Does anybody have, like, any, like, 1998 <laughs> Domino's pizza? Or maybe, like, even 2000, like, <laughs> three or four? <laughs> Whatever Domino's is like, hey, we put sauce on cardboard. Fuck you. So, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, you can find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. So you don't miss the board play next week. Yo, Noid. Yo noid. Probably Yo Noid. The Diablo mod. The, Yo Noid, the Diablo <laughs> or you're the mod. Noid going to the Diablo dungeon. <laughs> or Diablo is the Yo Noid when you reach that. <laughs> All the enemies are Yo Noid. <laughs> and next, uh, Original Flavor Wednesday will be Mario Party. The original Mario Party for the N64. Yeah. I remember playing it. We'll see. We'll see how This it is going to be it, Tyler. I feel it. This is where it's going to yeah. turn around for you. Until we have, like, scarred palms. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the, all of our controllers Here's where break. we brand ourselves yeah. and break all break the controllers. Maybe that's what we need. We to, need to, to be break a, all the yeah. controllers so we can't keep playing the games. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, maybe we need to be initiated into the N64 culture, and that's how we do it. <laughs> it's our it's our own Mark of the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we still love five star iTunes. We do. So if you enjoyed this critical eye episode, dark. It was a dark one. It was a darker episode. Us just really discussing how we've really felt about the game so far, Mm -hmm. and that we we hate feeling like this because I want because people like people are like, man, I love that you guys are doing N sixty four games. I know. I'm not, but I'm glad you're happy. (laughs) Well, this is the here's what's so shitty about it. Is I feel you and I both went into this like, all right, we're gonna play some games. We know it's good. We know it's good because it's the top twenty-five. We don't have to go through the shitty seventy-five games mm-hmm. and a hundred uh, top one hundred list. We're cutting right to the best, the best, the best of the best, the top quarter. People love this system. People love these games. I'm really excited to experience these. Mm-hmm. Sit down. Oh God. Oh. I've committed to a horrible, horrible thing. <laughs> Even the the ratio of good games to bad games, I feel is better on the SNES top one hundred. 
I feel like even even with the hundred games, oh, really? I've played more games that okay. I thought were better than the games we've done for this list. So if far. only because they're much shorter, do you get through them faster? That's also true. <laughs> That's also true. We had no problem doing two a week for for that. None for this. This is a lot. This yeah. is a lot diff- more different. A lot more different. A lot more different. <laughs> you know, if you were to compare the two, yeah. you'd say that was more Whoa. different than that one. <laughs> well, no, it's something you compare. Both different, days. but this isn't different. <laughs> we still love if if you don't mind this, or if you're if you're enjoying us like. Feeling like this, being tormented, and want to keep it going yeah. on. Leave us a five star iTunes review. If there's a game you want us to play, if you're like, man, okay, I know a good game they need to play, include that in your five star written review. We and- know Superman sixty four is not good. Don't even, <laughs> <laughs> don't even. And if there's or there's a guest host who you think, man, they also need to be tormented or they need to be enlightened. Hashtag more Miller. Yep. <laughs> Then include that in your in your review, and we promise whatever you put in that five star written iTunes review, we will get to it eventually. eventually. Don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we're going to be back, whether we like it or not. Uh, we're going to be talking about probably Yonoid, which I want to point out that we just <laughs> we just bitched about not wanting to play horrible games, and Yonoid is like. <laughs> Much much worse than Conker's Bad Fur Day. Well, there's uh, there's a difference between yeah, because like, you can dismiss it, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, like mystery oh, science Yonoid. theater. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no one gives a shit about you know it. Let's shit all over it. But it's like these games. It's like okay, the we, Domino CEO throws <laughs> his eye out. <laughs> we got to be respectful of these N64 games because mm-hmm. they are beloved. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so we're gonna be talking about Yonoi. You don't go to India and just eat all all the hamburgers. It just <laughs> You could. That's that's my comparison. I'm going. With. <laughs> you could go to that one restaurant. <laughs> In the meantime, you can always find us at tadpog.com. That's where the show notes live. Um, you can find us at Facebook. We're at facebook.com/tadpog. Uh, that is a really good place. Tyler, you would normally make an episode post there, mm-hmm. and that is the best place to let us know how you feel about this particular episode. Um, did you love Conker's Bad Fur Day? Let us know. And if you disagree with us, let us know. But more importantly, if you agree with us, let us know. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. We are at Tadpog underscore podcast. It's cumbersome. I realize. Uh, thank you for everybody who is retweeting us, um, especially our episode announcements, because mm-hmm. that lets new people find out about the show. Uh, you can call us if you want. Uh we love getting voicemails. We love getting text messages. In fact, so much that we save them up for a very special episode once a month where mm-hmm. we, we get to all of those. Or another shit Monday when we're just out of, out of shit to talk about. Probably Yonoid. Who yep. knows? <laughs> <laughs> so, Tyler, what did you think of the eight minutes of Yonoid that you played? <laughs> I also only played eight because it was awful as shit. We just recorded that episode. Let's play some calls. Yep. <laughs> Uh, you can do so at 270-883-2555. Uh, if you leave a voicemail, uh, try to keep it under three minutes unless it is erotic literature, in which case um, try to break it into three-minute parts. Easily digestible. You can give us money if you want, lastly. Um, it's completely optional. Of course, this show is free. We do this for free. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you if you get enjoyment out of this and you want to show it to us with um, cold, hard cash, you can do that uh, at patreon.com slash tadpog. Uh, thank you so much for everybody who uh, is donating, continues to donate. Uh, we really, really do appreciate it. Mm-hmm. it. It makes the bad things we have to do that much easier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the it, fact that we still have listeners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, too. Our, our theme song, Dave. Tyler, that is Moves by Sycamore Drive, mm. a link to which can be found in the show notes at tadpog.com. How do you want to close this out? Uh, we, man, we've already done Chipmunks. Mm-hmm. We've already done Chipmunks. Um, how about Slappy the Squirrel from Tiny Toons? Or Animaniacs, sorry. Slappy the Squirrel from Animaniacs. I don't remember how that goes. Um, 
I think she's from Animaniacs. She is the um, she the really she's the grumpy uh, gray squirrel with a purse and a hat with a flower on it. Oh, sort of like the the cartoon equivalent to Esther from Sanford and Son. Yes. Okay. I think that was Animaniacs. Was that Animaniacs? I think you're right. It was. I mean, it was one of those side. Sh- one yeah. of those. Okay. Okay. You know what she sounds like, obviously. Yeah. Now do. <laughs> or you could just do you could just do Esther if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there'd be no problems nope. with that at all. <laughs> so until next time, tropical Capricorn. I don't. I, I don't know why I suggested that. I don't know what she sounds like either. <laughs>